This video was brought to you by Brilliant. Recently, we made a video on how Georgia Maloney became Europe's most popular leader. But who's down at the other end of the list? Or more bluntly, who are Europe's least popular leaders? Fortunately, Morning Consult publishes a regular approval tracker of a number of European leaders. So in this video, we're going to have a look through the bottom half of that list, explaining why those leaders are where they are until we get to Europe's least popular leader. Topping the bottom half of the list is German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, with 32% approval and 62% disapproval. One of the things that's hurt his favourability is the simple fact that he leads a governing coalition of three fairly different parties – his own Social Democratic Party, the Greens and the economically liberal Free Democrats. This has led to disputes and delays in a number of policy areas, including a new heating law aimed at pushing households towards cleaner energy. And just this week, the cabinet failed to adopt tax relief legislation amid an internal rift. All this is emblematic of the government's difficulty with public infighting, largely between the Greens and the FDP, who run the finance ministry. Additionally, compared to other countries, the German economy is not on a strong footing. In fact, the IMF forecasts that Germany will be the only major economy not to grow in 2023, with a predicted decline of 0.3%. Meanwhile, the Conservative opposition CDU-CSU has held the lead in the polls for more than a year now, and the far-right AFD has also seen substantial growth in support, to the point that they now poll ahead of Scholz's SPD. Next up is Austrian Chancellor Karl Nehammer, who has 29% approval and 63% disapproval. Arguably, Nehammer and his Conservative People's Party are feeling the damage done by the corruption scandal that brought down his predecessor, Sebastian Kurz. But more damaging to Nehammer is that the Populist Freedom Party, often labelled as far-right, has grown to become the most popular party according to polling. They've galvanised opposition to things like the government's restrictive COVID measures during the pandemic, inflation and the economic difficulties sparked by the war in Ukraine. As a military-neutral non-NATO EU member state, Austria has been walking a tightrope when it comes to Ukraine, with the country supporting Ukraine with humanitarian but not military aid and supporting European sanctions on Russia. The Freedom Party has pounced on this and branded themselves the defenders of Austrian neutrality and the country's economic interests against the, quote, pointless sanctions supported by the government. Moving on, Rishi Sunak, the British Prime Minister, is next on the list, with an approval rating of 28% and disapproval of 60%. Despite only being in power for less than a year, Sunak has the bad fortune of being from a party that has governed the UK for the past 13 years. So, naturally, voters are laying things like high mortgage costs, relatively persistent inflation, long National Health Service waiting lists, and more at the Conservatives' door. Polling shows them as less trusted than Labour in basically all policy areas, and Sunak has so far failed to turn things around. More unpopular than Sunak, though, is Mark Rutte of the Netherlands, who realistically won't be losing any sleep over the fact that 28% of Dutch people approve of him, while 67% disapprove. That's because he's already announced that he'll retire from politics at the next election. Rutte has endured a whole load of political scandals in his 13-year tenure, including revelations that the government had falsely accused 26,000 parents of child benefit fraud between 2005 and 2019. Another issue that's damaged his popularity is the government's push to reduce nitrogen-based pollutants in the agricultural sector. This sparked significant protests from Dutch farmers, who in turn helped propel the relatively new farmer citizen movement to victory in this year's provincial elections. Ahead of the November election, they are now polling in third behind Rutter's party, which is now led by his Justice and Security Minister, and also the Green Left Labour Party alliance. Next up is Norwegian Prime Minister Jonas Gahr Stora, with an approval rating of 27% and 67% disapproval. Like many leaders on this list, the economic turbulence and rising prices, largely caused by Russia's invasion of Ukraine, have damaged Stora's standing with the public since his Labour Party won the 2021 election. 
In fact, under Storer, the Labour Party has fallen to its lowest polling level in years, and the party's difficulties were highlighted in May by former deputy leader Helga Pedersen, who said in a speech that Labour was in crisis. Storer pushed back against this and denied that the party was in crisis. But when you're having to actively deny a crisis following comments from a prominent member, then things probably aren't going too well. Moving on now to the person in the second worst position on this list, and this one may not surprise you. Here we find French President Emmanuel Macron, continuing the trend set by his predecessors of being deeply unpopular. Specifically, he has 27% approval and 66% disapproval. Macron is more than a year into his second and final five-year term as president, but since being re-elected, he's faced all sorts of challenges that have dented his popularity. Perhaps the most significant of these was his unpopular pension reform that increased the minimum pension age from 62 to 64. Polls at the time suggested that about two-thirds of French people opposed the measures. But things were made worse for Macron's unpopularity by the way his government forced the bill through Parliament using Article 49.3, a controversial constitutional method. In fact, nearly 70% said they considered this a denial of democracy and expressed anger about it. So finally, we get to the bottom of the list and Europe's least popular leader, where we find Czech Prime Minister Petra Fiala, with 20% approval and 76% disapproval. Fiala has been pretty strong internationally, particularly with his support for Ukraine, as he was one of the first leaders to visit Kyiv following Russia's invasion, although he is evidently deeply unpopular at home. Now, while it has fallen quite a lot, one key factor is that the Czech Republic has had particularly high inflation, peaking at around 18% in September last year. So the feeling that the government hasn't done enough to shield Czechs from the impact of the war has damaged Fiala's favourability rating. In fact, polling from earlier this year suggests that there's not much the Czech public approve of in his government. Just 30% were satisfied with the government's programme, while 59% were dissatisfied. 27% were satisfied with its activities, while 69% were not. 30% were satisfied with its communication, while 66% were not. All in all, giving Fiala's government the lowest favourability rating of a Czech government since 2013, and the lowest approval in Europe. So, those are the seven least popular European leaders, according to Morning Consult polling. But how do you think they stack up? Who should be higher and who should be lower? And who's missing entirely? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. TLDR is all about independent journalism and using facts and data to back up our reporting. We truly believe in the importance of this, and hopefully you do too. As such, we're brushing up on our data and analysis skills to make ourselves better reporters, and we're doing that on Brilliant. They're the STEM learning platform full of all kinds of courses, which can help with improving your career and understanding of the world. For instance, their hypothesis testing course allows us to better analyse claims and test our own assumptions and theories. Or the predicting with probability course helped us better understand projections and forecasts, allowing us to better understand when there's something weird going on with official projects. It's not just statistics though, the interactive and engaging courses over at Brilliant can take you through all kinds of important topics, from the worlds of maths, data science and computer science. Brilliant have been a long-term supporter of the channel, so if you've ever considered checking it out, we'd really appreciate it if you used our link. That way they'll continue to support us, and perhaps more importantly for you, the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Thanks for watching, and thanks to Brilliant for supporting TLDR.